Hi, this is Nicole Burkholz of Mindful Connections with Sunday's Horse Logic. And today I have something to talk about that's really exciting. I haven't really put my head fully around it, so bear with me as I'm talking about setting boundaries. Um, I have, for the last three weeks, been working with a woman, Colleen Campbell, who recently rescued two pregnant mares from slaughter. What I found like amazingly crazy about the story is that these two mares were both um, in the last trimester actually like literally short of giving birth and they were actually shipped off to the slaughterhouse um, being pregnant. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I can't even go there. But Colleen thankfully saved these two mares. One of them actually on the long trailer ride gave birth to the first baby, um, a little cold. And the second mare, I believe, gave birth to, um, after she was a couple, maybe a week, um, at uh, Colleen's place. And um, that's the mare. Her name is Gracie. And the foal, uh, her name was Joker, but now it's actually Farah. Um, they are the ones I get to work with right now once a week. And the idea of working with them is to see a little bit um, how I can apply the mindful approach uh, to two very different horses. One is of course a baby who had only good experience uh, experiences and is very much just like a little um, blank canvas. And then the mom, Gracie, is actually very, very concerned about people. She seems um, like she doesn't want to be touched, she doesn't want anybody near her, at least the first time three weeks ago when I met her and Colleen worked a little bit with her on, you know, being um, approached so that she could actually put a halt on her if she needed to move the horses around a little bit. And uh, so there had been a little bit of connecting going on, but when I got there the first time, I mean, this mare, when I was 15 feet from her, she was like, no, thank you, and she left. And the idea is that most likely she was a brood mare that was brought in for any of the typical vet and hoof care, um, manhandled in quite a way, and then put back out in the field to, you know, bear more, more horses. So what occurred to me last time when I worked with her a few days ago, is that we always talk about boundaries with horses and how to set healthy boundaries because most horses that we have in our backyards are in the pocket horses, right? Um, most of us don't look at the horse as uh, simply uh, like it sometimes, I, I remember it from old riding schools where the horse was brought in, led up, you know, brushed, tacked up, you get on them and you almost don't have a ground manner type of connection with them. Um, but that thankfully has changed because I think it is much nicer to have obviously some connection on the ground. But sometimes it goes a little too far and your horse is too far in your pocket. And then there are a lot of people out there teaching, you know, how to set boundaries and how far out should your horse be and whatnot. That's all great. And one of the mares, the one that gave birth on the trailer, is actually one of those, Colleen told me, that needs exactly that because she's like in your face and she needs to set boundaries. The mayor I'm working with is the exact opposite. She doesn't even, boundaries almost don't occur to her unless you're 15, 20 feet away. Then she's like, you're overstepping a boundary and coming into my space, which of course also means she doesn't come into your space much. And the question is, how do we teach a horse to come into our space? And last time I was there, I had this this little moment with the mayor that was such a great example and I wanted to share that how we can set boundaries or invite boundaries unfortunately the camera at that point was off you know we're filming the sessions but at that point we were ready to leave and as always the best little part happens right when you're about to leave so what happened is the mayor three weeks later is much more comfortable and I have a couple of pictures here where you can see the mayor is much much more comfortable being near us humans and one big thing that attributed to it is actually that Colleen took the halt off. She, the mayor finally has this little run-in that she can hang out with her baby and she could take the halter off, uh, the mayor, because she now knows she can get it back on without stressing the horse too much. And the moment she took the halter off, the horse was already different. And I immediately said yes, because now there is, you trust her so she can trust you. And the moment 
that halter is no longer the I can grab you any time, but where there is a relationship built where it's like, please put your nose in the halter and let's do something together. When that moment occurs, obviously there's more trust. And due to that, the horse's face totally changed. And I mean, look at her, she's this beautiful quarter horse mare. But there's also, as you can see, this little water bucket over there. And at the end of our session, I stood in the door and the mare actually, right? So the door is behind me and the mare came and she wanted to go over to the water bucket. But the distance between me and the water bucket was kind of tight. And though she had stood with me even tighter earlier during the session, she came on and she looked at me and she went kind of like, and I saw that and I said, no worries. And I just took one step over. And the moment I took the step over, she stepped forward and put her head in the bucket. And right, it makes sense. The moment the horse in the water was, there was like, I would say maybe a third full of water. The moment the horse puts the face into the water bucket, the eyes kind of disappear a little bit around the, the top of the bucket. And so for her to feel comfortable sticking her face in there and still be safe, I needed to step a little over and gave her a little more space. Now in that moment when I did that, the mare, I could feel, she was like, oh. She's like, then I can go and drink. And I said, yep, feel free. And when she came back out with her head again from the water bucket, I moved back into the spot. She blew out through the nose and everything was absolutely perfect. I can tell you right now, next week when I go and see this mare, this horse will be a whole different being again because I spoke with Colleen about it. I said, this is the kind of stuff how you can actually show her you respect her boundaries and you actually give her space so that she can feel more comfortable. And in return, she will want to take up more of that space between you. Because you show such respect in those moments to the horse, they mirror it right back and give you more of their heart. That's really how this works. And though most trainers probably would tell you, well, let's put it this way. I don't know if most trainers would say it because I think really good trainers would know about this, but often we hear, you know, whoever moves their feet first or if the horse moves you, which in this case she actually did, that that's a negative thing and I give up my position of leadership and whatnot. I don't think that's true. I think that has nothing to do with leadership in that moment. It has something to do with me saying, yes, I hear you. You're still not that sure around people. And if you need to put yourself into a situation where your face is basically covered, your head is down, you're not sure what's going on, and you need a little more space, I'd be happy to give you that space. And then acknowledge that I actually saw it through her eyes and understood why she would make such a request, really. And um, that, to me, has a much deeper opportunity to, to develop into a really trusting relationship than any of the bigger who moves their feet first type of concepts, which it always depends. I mean, that's why I always love Ray Hunt. He always would answer when people said, is this the right thing or that the right thing? It depends. And in this moment, it was such a situation that this horse was asking, I answered, and we had a connection, and whew, she will be so different next week, and I can't wait to see what, what she's doing. And I love it that Colleen is, is learning alongside me. She's a great horse trainer, but I, um, I think I'm bringing a perspective to her where she is now starting to see how she could approach these little situations a little different. And this mare is making leaps and bounds. Again, three weeks ago, I could not really get near her, um, you know, because she was so afraid. And three weeks later, she's with us in the stall door, which is amazing and sniffing our hand, being curious. So the more we show our horses that we're with them, that we're present, that we are not just applying any cookie cutter type of method, but by us really trying to understand where they come from. They want to be safe and they want to connect with us. Those are usually the two things that matter the most. When we then act upon it, like I was just describing, we not only feel better within, because in that moment I felt like, wow, I got her. This is so great. And she got me. And wow, that feels really good to me. But her going, 
after, let me tell you, I knew that she was feeling good um, and even just a little ounce safer than she might have felt before. So it's an interesting topic, I think. Let me know what you think about boundaries and setting them and also inviting them. I guess that's the thing. We can set a boundary, but we can also invite somebody a little closer so we can start building a boundary. Because with that horse, she was so far away, we couldn't even really start any type of boundary setting. So now we're inviting her and we're letting her know, well, right here, this is a good space, at least for now. All right, I'll keep you posted how this goes. Have a beautiful rest of the day. See you next week.